Guys, I am here today with a friend of the channel, Steve, also known as Dark Zero, of course, the creator of Zero Linux, who has been working on a number of interesting tools, a number of interesting Arch Linux post install scripts and related tools uh, surrounding that, supporting that particular script. And he is generous enough to spend his time here today to discuss those projects. Steve, how are you doing? I've been doing good, knock on wood. <laughs> Busy but we're with here, you. right? So that's what, that's all we can ask for. Yeah, uh, I've been real busy with uh, with these scripts because uh, maintaining specifically the Plasma install script that's uh, that's a beast on its own because it's an all in one. It includes right. the toolkit, it includes the rice, while doing all the uh, heavy lifting for Plasma. Yeah, uh, we should mention that your post install script for Arch is uh, KDE Plasma. No, uh, my it, well, I'm, my no. Uh, hit, this is where people, and it's good that you tripped on that because a lot of people do. I need to okay. clarify. The Plasma install script is an all-in-one that encompasses all my projects into a single uh, script, but it's not a post-install script. That's the script you, uh, people will use, will have to use if they want to install Plasma. I, I made sure of, it, uh, of having all the necessary packages in it because the uh, Plasma profile in Arch install is not good. Good. I, yep. I will. Uh, I will die on a hill when they decide. <laughs> to, when they decide to uh, fix that, I told them. They said we're gonna get to it, and that was a year and a half ago. So, so essentially, what you're trying to do is the uh, the new Arch install script that's part of Arch Linux now. That's the easy installer. You're trying to create a uh, a better. Just a Profile. Plasma experience, installing yep. it through that Arch install script? Yep. Okay. So uh, uh, the, the whole point of the Plasma install script is to fix the issue, the, the, the Arch install Plasma profile, which they have not, they have yet to fix. Uh, and I decided, and, and I decided to extend it a little bit. Yeah. And, and the problem with those, uh, with the Arch install script, you can select your particular desktop environment or window manager that you want to install. The problem is those profiles, a lot of them don't include the extra programs, some of the utilities that you typically need to support that particular desktop environment or window manager. For yeah. example, Plasma, you know, there's certain tools that you really need to, to tweak Plasma the right way. Yeah, and exactly. they, don't, they don't install those. They don't install those. They rely on the user to poke around in this wide jungle and no, I don't, I don't like that. So I decided to, to extend it a little bit, but uh, what do I mean by extending it? Uh, I mean, why not offer multiple ways to install Plasma, giving the user the freedom? Because this is, this is the biggest part of Linux, the freedom of choice. Right. So I was like, I, need, I, I shouldn't take away anything from the user. On the contrary, I have to give them more options. So what I did was I offered the Arch install method of installing Plasma, which is extremely minimal. It doesn't even include spectacle for capturing screenshots. Right. It doesn't include any, any of the, the, the packages that I deem necessary. So I kept it as is. So the first one, the minimal one, is the Arch install way of doing things. I just added Nano. Because oh, okay. I just well, I didn't try out the, uh, the your minimal option. I actually tried out the kitchen sink option, the one yeah. that installed everything. <laughs> well, the minimal version, I just added three packages to it because they're necessary. Nano, because they don't include Nano. They don't include Git. They don't include uh, Wget. So I added those three packages on top, and I added Falcon, a fourth package, because we need a browser uh, out of the box. We cannot have a desktop environment with zero browsers. So I took the safe route. I just included the KDE default browser, Falcon. Mm -hmm. uh, for the second option, which is the full kitchen sink option, which I do not recommend for low-end systems because it's going to install everything. It's not going to prompt you. It's not going to... It's yeah, just... it, it installed uh, for me on a base arch ISO. Installing your kitchen sink option installed a little over a thousand pack. Yeah, I want to say it was a thousand sixty packages. Yeah, so it yeah. is a big install. It's but I the, wanted to do that because I was obviously testing your script. So I wanted to see if anything failed to to install. So I chose everything. Yeah, it's uh, everything. It's I because I keep an eye out on the entire KDE stack on Arch repositories. Yeah. 
the whole group. And some people do want the entire KDE suite of applications. I do so. mention it in, in the video I made about it, uh, which will be linked in the description. But the, uh, the video uh, in the video, I said, this is for developers. If uh, you're, you want to develop for KDE or you want to uh, contribute to KDE, install the kitchen sink because you will need everything to test yeah. everything to see if everything is working. And but, I think a lot of people would be surprised. Like most, most KDE users are probably used to having a pre-built distribution, like for example, Kubuntu or Manjaro KDE, things like that, which really are quite minimal in what they install. And most yep. people don't realize the, the full suite of KDE applications is like a million applications. Like yep. there's so many KDE applications out it, there. It's uh, uh, close to three gigs in size no. of a download. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then the third option is, why did I put my uh, option as the third option? Because it's number three and number three is my favorite number because of Christian <laughs> reasons. Uh, but uh, I put my, uh, curated list as number three. This is where I went through the entire KDE stack, installed multiple times, removing packages, adding packages. It took me three months to do that. People right. think it's easy, but it's not. So I went through it with a fine tooth comb, as, the, as the, the saying goes. And I made sure I included everything for a balanced experience, not leaving out any un uh, any uh, necessary packages i removed just the unnecessary cr uh, craft so yeah. uh, for the last option the last option is kind of weird i kept thinking should i add it should i not add it should i add it should i not add it because that option it does what the second option does exactly the whole kitchen sink but instead of using dash dash no confirm i just removed that so it's going to prompt the user for each and every group to select packages from each and every group of Plasma. So this will be completely selective. The user is free to select whatever they want from each and every group, but that is a very tedious option because yeah. the install will end up, just selecting the packages will end up taking you an hour, an hour and a half right. because you have to research what each package does and this is not for everyone. <laughs> this yeah, is for if, if you wanted to pick and choose which packages to install, then probably that well, there's an easier way to go about that than being yeah. prompted for all the time about it. Yeah, this is this is for the, not for the faint of heart. So if you yeah. want to do that, you're free to do that. But it's probably easier to do the minimal install and then add the packages you want yeah. rather than install everything and remove the packages you don't want. A lot of times, exactly, exactly. So, but uh, uh, for freedom of choice, I was like, I need to keep this op uh, this option in. Because you never know, maybe people want to pick and choose. So who am I to take that option away from them? So the right. more freedom I can provide them, the better. So basically, that's the Plasma install script. It will prompt you in the end if you, if you want to enable my repository and grab the necessary packages to, to use my toolkit. And that's mm -hmm. it. You end up with a vanilla Plasma experience. Yeah, and when I, I did my installation, like I said, I did the full kitchen sink as a test. Uh, you know, the Arch install process is like a five minute install, the base exactly. Arch install. It's very, very quick. And then on top of that, that thousand or so packages installing the full KDE suite of applications, that took maybe, maybe another 10 minutes. Like it's yeah. a really a quick installation. Like it, you can be done with the whole install, reboot, and you're in a legit KDE Plasma distro ready to go in about 15 minutes. There is one thing, however, I need uh, one neat thing I need to mention about the Arch install script is when you, uh, because I do mention in my video, you need to skip the profile selection of, uh, part. Why? Yeah. Because now it def if you don't select any profile, it defaults to the minimal. Right. So that's a neat feature of Arch install. So uh, that's why I tell people skip it. You can skip the multilib because my plasma. If you're going to use my plasma install script, it's going to enable it for you. No, I, I actually was going to mention that. So you, uh, in, in the GitHub for your installation script, it does mention how you should proceed through the Arch install. Like yeah. you should yeah. uh, skip the profiles because you don't need it. Skip the drivers you, part. Yeah, skip the drivers. Um, and then you, you suggested turning on multi-lib 
yeah i need to fix that i need to update that yeah but but i also noticed it's going to do that anyway right yeah so yeah i need to update necessary. that but mm. i mean if they choose it that's fine they probably should they may want to turn on testing to some users like if they're probably going to go through the menu and choose that stuff yeah. anyway if they want it so yeah but the most important part is they need to skip the profile because the profile is can get a bit confusing for some users uh yeah. i also and, uh, noticed in your documentation you suggested uh when they go through the networking they need to tick on network manager which yeah. i also thought was weird because i'm assuming Network manager is probably in your list of packages to install. It is, but so they're probably going to get it anyway. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I was like, I I might as well mention it because yeah, I mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt <laughs> because if it's in already installed and the 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 Pacman flags I use is dash dash needed, so mm -hmm. if it's already installed, it's not going to reinstall right. anything. So I always use the dash dash needed because yeah. I, sometimes packages and, get and installed. And honestly, that... it's good that people know what they're. Uh, networking is uh, like it, if you make them go select network manager if they ever have a support question yeah at least they know to tell people yeah i'm using network manager yeah that is another maybe, reason yeah. yeah so that's uh, uh and it, uh, that's my plasma install script so basically uh it's an all-in-one yeah. because everything really, because everything oh, else gonna... the sorry because because everything well, else well, be you know we're on a lag because of the distance between you know unfortunately people often ask you know why do people end up talking over each other on these video conference calls it's because we're on opposite sides of the earth and there is some latency no no matter how good a connection we might have there is some time delay so sometimes we start talking and we don't know the other person you know is still talking so yeah so i just wanted to say that uh, with uh, by using my Plasma install script, you will end up with my toolkit and my repository mm -hmm. if you select it to enable them and install them at right. the end. But there is another thing I forgot to mention. My Plasma install script also takes care of uh, the missing because Arch install doesn't install all the uh, necessary Pipewire packages. Don't know why. Uh, well, they don't... The Arch install script does have a audio section. Yeah, but it doesn't install everything. And it has Pipewire as an option, but... No. It's, it's not a good pipe wire. <laughs> it's not not good. I I don't want to 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 be caught saying that it's not good, but it's not complete. It's it doesn't install the SOF firmware, for example, that some people require for their hardware. Uh, they don't enable the uh, what's it called? Uh, I forgot the name of the service. There's a service that you need to enable and add the user to that service in order to get less latency for pipe wire. Uh, so they don't do that. So I fix that in my Plasma install script, and it's also in my toolkit. If they forgot, uh, if they didn't use, because my tool here, I need to clarify something about my toolkit. My toolkit was not built to be used with the Plasma install script that I created. It was intended for vanilla Arch for people installing vanilla uh, Arch. Doesn't matter what DE or window manager they're using. It was intended for those people who want, who prefer to use vanilla Arch. I then and integrated gonna, it in my Plasma install script as a bonus. And, and we'll, we'll get to the toolkit in a minute because I did install that and play with it. Not using your uh, Plasma install, I actually already had a VM of an existing distribution, an Arch-based distribution, not necessarily, and played around with it, and I had some thoughts on it. But one last thing I, I wanted to get to on your Arch install script, because it is great, and it's very straightforward. I will say probably the biggest drawback or the biggest negative I think you're going to find with it is the fact that it uses the Arch install script and the, the fact that Arch install itself is so damn flaky. I uh, did get are, that already. I there are going to be some people that have, because I, I've had it, I, I, because I install mm. Arch all the time. The Arch install script is not 100%. There are going to be some people that have issues with their installation, and they're going to come blaming you. Yeah, right? that is true, because they, they, uh, I have already some users who did mention that. Mm. And I was like, but I'm telling you to skip all the parts that it doesn't do good. Yeah. And I'm fixing those parts using, as, at least for Plasma, because I only target Plasma. Boo-hoo. <laughs> I only talk to Plasma, but I fix at least some parts of it. Uh, if you use my Plasma install script, which is the Bluetooth, the pipe wire, uh, and I install some things that the Arch install script does not install, like Nano, Git, WGit, stuff like that. So uh, it, my script 
yeah it it's only uh single minded it's the single uh one one d uh mm-hmm. not multi uh dimensional because it only targets people who want to install plasma uh, some people suggested, why don't you do it uh, for everyone? I'm like, I'm not the, the, the two, the only two broken profiles in the Arch install script are, uh, are Plasma and Hyperland. No, I disagree with that. I disagree strongly, <laughs> strongly with that. There's some other ones too. What, well, I, I only tested the Hyperland, <laughs> Plasma, XFCE. Those are those. the ones you, you like to play with, so you notice them. But trust me, some of the others could be a lot better too. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. I could I could try to to, to address some of, uh, some of them, but nobody's reporting anything. So mm-hmm. they just say, but yeah, the, what you said is a hundred percent true, and we cannot satisfy everyone. That's the bottom mm-hmm. line. So yeah. uh, that was your post installation script. Uh, my well, plasma. It's not, necessar- my it's plasma. not necessarily post installation because as you really you're starting with a fresh installation, right? Yes, yeah. and what you need to run it. Do. In- They're going to download the Arch ISO. Yeah. and run through a completely new installation. So it it's kind of what post-installation, prompted... but nobody's probably, most yeah. people are probably going to do it on a new installation, right? What uh, prompted me to do it that way was, uh, I don't know if, if you're into the whole Hyperland stuff, rising and stuff, but it, someone created a rice for Hyperland, but his script requires to be done in Cheroot, after install uh, exactly doing what I did in my video for my plasma install script, skipping the profiles and everything, just having a minimal install with no DE or WM. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you're prompted to arch root, you say yes, and you run his script, which will take care of installing Hyperland and his doc file. So that's what prompted me to do it that way, because I thought, yeah, but it can be done in another way where you can install a minimal install, don't root. Just reboot into TTY and run my script as root because it requires root. And that's it. Done deal. You can do it either way, but you still have to do it after having installed basic Arch. I mean, you really don't need to root if you're already on your existing system that you're installing to anyway. No, but when uh, what I mean by root is after installing the minimal packages, Arch install is going to prompt you. You want to root? Oh, okay. You don't yeah. that during the instant. Yeah. yeah. You you say yes, it's better that way because you don't mm. need to type sudo. But if you reboot your computer and yeah. well, log the reason the Arch user, install is doing that is because you're not actually on your installation yet. You're still on the ISO itself. Yeah. So it has to change root over yeah. to exactly. you know, the drive, hopefully you partition correctly, yeah. which is a whole other area where you might find users. That's another some... part. Uh, that's why in my guide I said the guide is targeted to people who have a sing- who are installing to a separate drive or to a specific drive, not targeted to people who want to install on a separate partition on the same drive, mm-hmm. uh, because now it's more confusing. Because when you go to the partitioning section in Arch install, you now have LLVM. Mm-hmm. Uh, LVM. Uh, let me sorry, ask you LVM. this. Uh, yeah, the Arch install script. Because I have some thoughts on this. What do you like? About what, what? What do you think about their automatic partitioning? It could, do you think it's good? You know no. their their defaults. Not really. It could use okay. it could use some work because if you uh, it's it's not safe. It's they don't put How safety so? measures. A user can uh, select the wrong drive and not oh. realize it. No, there's no steps extra warnings telling the prompting yeah, the user are you sure are you really sure or whatever well, but, but every partition manager whether it's you know f disk or g parted whatever it is you're using you know it's always dangerous to be playing yeah. around with that so obviously the user has to know hey you're about to format your drive when you do this yeah true but the way they have their uh, automatic partitioning now is not bad it's mm-hmm. very user friendly because it doesn't have too many options. But to get there in the Arch install script, you have because you get welcomed with LVM now beta. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's confusing. Even to me at first when I saw the new version, I was like, "Where's my?" I used to hit automatic partition, select my drive, and go back. Now I have to go three extra steps. Yeah, I got confused. 
I, I will say, I mean, it has nothing to do with you, so there's nothing you can do about it, but the Arch Install team could make that whole partitioning section a lot clearer yeah. as what it's actually doing because selecting the drives, unless the user knows to hit the tab key and that's actually what's selecting the drive, they could just yeah. hit enter, which just goes to the next screen, but they really didn't select a drive. Exactly. So that's an issue that I found. Yeah. Uh, another issue I found is even if you do it correctly, when you get to the last step where you chose the drive, you turned on the right drive for you know installing your whatever file system you chose, then you have to go down and hit the back thing yeah. to go back to where it would be great if that just took you. To I would the, agree with the, that one. Yeah, you know, because when, what if they go back and then maybe they think, well, maybe I need to choose some more things, and yeah. they actually screw up the partition that they actually created. Yeah, the yeah. I didn't think about it that way, but yeah, that is. You, you, I, I, I always think like the total noob that knows nothing about computers, how will mm -hmm. they think about this? And I think some of that is kind of confusing. Yeah, it, it could be done better. Uh, mm -hmm. The profiles can require a lot of fixing, which I don't think they will ever do because they keep promising and doing nothing about them. They just leave them as they are. Uh, what else? Uh, there's... Well, they probably got a lot more bugs, like like important things to fix yeah. that are broken. That Yeah. Uh, sometimes, uh, for example, I've seen it on Eric's video where he shows off the Arch install. He always selects Belgium mm -hmm. for Azerty keyboard, but he always ends up with QWERTY <laughs> for yeah. whatever reason. It doesn't respect his locale, his uh, keyboard uh, layout. I don't know why. It doesn't save it. Well, well, as I said, you know, running through my, my own Arch install so many times, I've noticed it's very flaky at times that sometimes it just craps out for no reason. Yeah, and so can Calamaris. So <laughs> we're not saying that the Arch install, uh, Arch install script is bad. Calamaris is better. A Calamaris has its own its own uh, down downfalls. Yeah. Now <laughs> That's I'm going to show it. on the screen here uh, your your website here, zero Linux dot X Y Z. New uh, website. If it, yeah, it's a new website. If they click the projects tab, they will actually find information yeah. about these projects we're talking about here. Uh, the post install script is this here, where all you do is you enter a line in the TTY or in the terminal, you get a little in curses menu asking, do you want a minimal install, complete install, curated install, or the selective install? You have four options, you choose it, and again, it's away it goes, Yep. and you're done. Like I said, it, I, I chose the the longest one. Yeah. And it, it was done in under 10 minutes. Yeah. It was, it was and a I very need, easy install. And I need to say something. Uh, this I need to clarify to all people uh, because I've been told by a lot of security conscious uh, developers about this. Do not recommend people to pipe a command, uh, randomly pipe a command into bash uh, like that. So what I did was I was I added a section on GitHub in the readme for, the, all, <laughs> for all the security conscious. You just W get the, the script, open it up in your uh, favorite IDE, check it out. Only when you trust it, do you run the, uh, the curl yeah. command. I mean, there's nothing wrong necessarily telling somebody to run a bash command, but they should know what it does. And in this case, you're asking bash to execute a script. You probably I, I just tell people, hey, go read the script first. Yeah. Most That's of the people probably have some experience reading a bash script. Here's the script. You yep. can actually go read the source code, see what it does. If you think it's safe, then yeah. yeah. kind of like what Arch Linux does like right, with their package builds and the AUR. Mm -hmm. You know, as they say, it's it's not safe. But, hey, if you want to go use this, go read the package build first. If you think the package build's safe, then run it. Yeah. that's uh... Ultimately, people do have to put some trust in yeah. the software they're going to grab. Yeah. And, you know, People need to make that choice on their own, who, who to trust, who not to trust. Exactly. But it's, it's, uh, it falls on our shoulders to at least give them the safe, the safe route, the, the option to, to take the safe route. And because in, any time you execute a script that has to have root privileges, yeah. you're giving it permission to change your system. Like There's nothing. Like If it's a malicious script, it doesn't matter whether they executed it by entering that bash command you gave them, or if you packaged it up as an app image and said, hey, change the permissions to executable and then run it, well, that's still going to hose your machine if it was yeah. malicious. Either way, neither one of them safe. 
Neither yeah. one of them is safe. It relies on the user if they want to read the code or not. Right. Uh, but I gave them the safe route to take. If it's yeah. on them if they want to take it or not. But yeah. uh, other than that, all my and some people ask me why don't I put at least my toolkit on the AUR. I was like, no, I need more control over that. And my toolkit is not as simple as installing a package. It needs to go through a pre-installation script, not post, pre, because it's going to uh, re uh, prompt the user which AUR helper they want to install. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I should, I'm going to switch back over to your projects website here. And this screenshot I'm showing, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm showing your the front screen of your Zero Linux Toolkit tool. Basically, it provides you a menu of things to run through for essentially setup, uh, settings, configuration with things like drivers and um, distro box and you know, Docker containers, tweaks for gaming, those interested in gaming, tweaks yep. for troubleshooting things, especially, for example, on an Arch-based system. If Pac-Man is broken for some reason, you know, some yep. of the things you could run through to probably fix the problems, for example, the mirror problem that so many people run into. And this tool is, is, again, very much like your install script was one line, you enter it in the terminal, away you go. Same thing here to install it. You enter one line in the terminal, hit enter, it installs. And it, it prompts the user first which AUR helper they want, because if I force Faru on, on people and they, they're like, we don't like Rust, we prefer uh, Yay, because we hate Rust well, for whatever reason. Who doesn't like Rust? Oh, trust me, I've had, I've had a lot of people tell me we're trying to avoid Rust as much as we can. So uh, trust me, there's a lot of people uh, out there. There are some, we, we got some strange people, like mm. trying to avoid a specific programming language is almost impossible. Like if you're really... Like there's no if you install enough software, you're going to have every single programming language imaginable on your system. Exactly. Just if, without just, knowing, just accept it. Without even knowing, because some people yeah. install packages not knowing what it's written in. Then they tell you we're avoiding trying to avoid Rust, but there are you have programs on your system that are written in Rust. They don't even know that. Yeah, well, but, very soon you're going to have kernel modules and things that yeah. are going to be written in Rust. Like there's you can't you're not going to get around that. Yep, exactly. So, uh, but it's okay. It's fine. Everybody's, uh, they're all entitled to, to, to their likes and dislikes. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm just, I don't like to force people to anything. That's why I made the script prompt the user which AUR helper they want. And mm -hmm. then once they select that, it goes through uh, installing uh, the toolkit. One thing I wanted to say was, but I don't know if this is specifically with the choice I made in your post install script. But by choosing the full install, the complete install, I did get the toolkit. Now, is that oh going to be the same on every no. selection in that? Or okay. No. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, my toolkit, my Plasma install uh, script will prompt you in end curses if you want to uh, say, okay, oh, that's right. in, uh, you want okay. my repository and my toolkit. I did notice that. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you hit OK, then of course it's going to add my repo yeah. and grab the toolkit from there. Yeah, because that was the first thing when I rebooted after the install script, is I went into the KDE Plasma menu to see what was all installed, mm -hmm. and, and your your little toolkit thing yep. was, was there. It yep. had a, a desktop entry and everything. Yeah, and it, the uh, the name could be shorter. <laughs> I need to yeah. shorten the name of it because it occupies too much space. Well, but... you know. Linux programming names. Uh, it's got to be something that's unpronounceable and weird, if at all possible. I, uh, I at least it's not NCPCPCMCPP or whatever yeah. the hell that name <laughs> program name is. <laughs> we all struggle with that one. But the, my uh, toolkit is called Slap It for short. <laughs> Zero Linux. Slap It. I like it. Slap It. It's like Slap It, but with an X. Mm -hmm. So Zero Linux Arch Post Install Toolkit. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> But uh, uh, well, you missed I, an opportunity there if you could have named it Whip It. Whip It Good. <laughs> <laughs> whip It Whip It Good. I need to show my screen because you don't have that option yet. I just pushed it online. Uh, but now when you select option one, you have an extra option up top. Option U, Update System Simple Extended Advanced. Why does it have three options? Because when you select to update, it's going to prompt you 
what do you want to update? You want to update simple, which only updates. You want to use the simple method, which only updates the Arch packages if you never in, uh, enable the AUR. Extended will update the, uh, the Arch packages, the AUR, and flat packs. The last option is the last one you would ever want to use. I just kept it in because it's uh, my signature tool, top grade. A mm -hmm. lot of people, uh, uh, people who use uBlue know of that, the uh, yeah. uBlue project because they use Ujust. Ujust is just a wrapper for top grade, their own custom wrapper for top grade. So anyway, top grade is very dangerous. If you select option three, it's going to warn you whether in a red message, using top grade can be destructive. Use at own risk. So, yeah, and that's the one that when it says it's going to update everything, it's going to go and do all like the programming language specific package managers like PIP and Cargo yeah. and all of that. Yeah. And you, you may not want everybody doing that. The worst that. part it's of good it. You warn them though, because some people might want to do it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the worst part of it is it updates your Docker containers. Now, right. if you have Watchtower already installed for those who use People who don't use Docker will not know what I'm talking about, but for those who do, there's a, a Docker container called Watch, uh, Watchtower that updates your Docker containers the right way in the background without you even doing having to do anything. It's a cron mm. job, basically. It's a crony yeah. job, cron job. But uh, TopGrade will also detect, uh, see that you have Docker containers and it will upgrade them by doing the uh, Docker Compose pull command. But sometimes that's not great. Sometimes that might no. cause a, a, a bad download. No. So be careful <laughs> with this option. I'm just putting it out there. But that's just fresh off the press. It's a new option coming in a, uh, coming to you all, or it came, yeah. it came to you all. Uh, yeah, a lot of people will have problems. Like if you're somebody that's heavy into development, maybe you're you know, really into a development of whatever programming language it happens to be, and then it, all of a sudden it triggers that programming language specific package manager to update things. It's going to mess up some of the projects yep. that are you're locally on your specifically machine. Git. Specifically yeah. Git repository. Yeah. So that's not something, you know, again, if, if you're that kind of person, you you don't, definitely don't want to choose that option because it's going to mess up a lot yeah. of your work. There is a, a workaround, however, because TopGrade, like every single application, has its own settings in .config TopGrade. So you go there... Uh, so it's you can a, turn specific things off? Yes. Perfect. It's a, I yeah. think it's a TOML or YAML file. I forget. But it, 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 you open that configuration file. You just turn off what you, what you don't need to update. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the feature that I love about TopGrade is the fact that it updates the firmware in case there's a firmware update. Mm -hmm. And uh, it updates ZSH. Yeah. <laughs> because of the way I install ZSH from source, I don't... And I need to tackle something really important. Themes, there are certain packages like Themes, ZSH, and a few other packages uh, around that that, you, uh, that should not be installed from a UR or any other repository. Like, I'll give an, uh, I'll give an example uh, I wrote about uh, today, uh, which was, uh, let me see. The, what was it? Uh, oh, um, extend, uh, GNOME shell extension, for example. Yeah, I, I did see that. I'll show that here on your I was talking website. About the, you, you, you had a blog post about the uh, GNOME tiling I, shell extension. Yeah, thanks to you, because <laughs> I, I saw the video you made about it, and your video yeah, is in it, there. <laughs> yeah, it is very neat as far as, you know, the people that want to play around with some tiling in, in GNOME. But I do mention in, in the first thing in a b big warning message box here, grab it either from GNOME extension site or via the extension manager app, yeah, not I, the AUR or any repository. Yeah, I'm showing our viewers. <laughs> that box is bright blue here. Yeah, very yeah. clear warning. Yeah, because a lot of people think like, uh, hey, I can install GNOME extensions from the AUR. No, never do that. Please. No, I, I, the, yeah, I don't know anybody why you would want to do that anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And, and even, even Chaotic AUR has them in their repository. Yeah. No, no, people don't. 
if you value your uh, your sanity, your life, your computer, essentially, if you put the compute life of your computer, yeah, don't <laughs> do it. Don't do that. Uh, Install. Yeah. Use I mean, the, the, is the it extent. security issues, or you're just worried about the the broken packages? Broken Obviously, package, they're bro broken packages. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Here's the problem with. Uh, repo specific packages is number one, it installs them in the root, which they were not intended to be there. They're always intended to be in the user's dot local uh, home and then dot local GNOME extensions folder. Yeah, but, you, but you know, an Arch package can't install to your home directory. Exactly. That's, yeah. That's exactly it. So, well, when I shouldn't say Arch package, any standard package manager is not allowed to go into a user's yeah. home directory. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and the extensions were always made to be put in the user's home directory because there they have read write access and without root having to go to root. So, uh, never install them from, <laughs> from repositories or the AUR, please. Uh, but also, there's the fact that you, when you install from repositories, you're relying on a middleman, the maintainer of that package on said repositories. So we don't want that. If you, uh, because if for whatever reason they decide to slack, uh, to slack and lag behind and whatever, you'll see that the source, uh, if you installed it from the correct place, uh, let's say the extensions website, you'll see that the extensions website has a more advanced version or more up-to-date version than the one on the repositories or the AUR, which I suffered from for a long time. I was like, yeah, then you have to go talk to the maintainer and the maintainer not responding. I can give you a perfect example. PAMAC. Go hmm. to the AUR, see PAMAC. It's so out of date right now. It's like six months out of date or a half, yeah. or almost pa a year out of date. PAMAC is, is, is pretty much perpetually broken in Arch Linux. And yeah. honestly, I, I would just recommend all Arch Linux users just do not install PAMAC. Uh, just, it's, it's horribly broken. If you really want a graphical package manager for some reason, Octopi yeah. typically just works. Octopi is, yeah. it doesn't yeah, it's look not great. Flashy. It's, it's not, not it doesn't have any screenshots and all, you know, but, but you know what? It works. <laughs> it works and it has always worked, but Right. Uh, don't install the QT version. <laughs> the QT version looks, <laughs> looks even worse. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you have a lot of choices. That's why it, my toolkit. You can offers... even install uh, Bau. Yeah, Bau. Yeah, Bau. Yeah, Bau. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bau Arch is amazing. Linux, uh, a GUI uh, software center. I would say this about Bau. Yeah. Bau is one of my favorites out there because it supports app images. Snaps, black pack. All of it, out of the box. Out of the box. It's, it's just like a, top grade, except in a graphical. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not. It's it not doesn't top do, grade. No. It's not top grade because top grade goes overboard, but pretty yeah. much all standard package right. formats, it's going to. It's going to support. Uh, and the best part of it is when you install app images, it's going to ask you, do you want to include them in your app menu? Yep. Yeah, and the, uh, the launcher or yeah. whatever, the. Uh, mm. yeah. So it's going to create the de desktop file and everything. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's a, it's developed by a single person. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They don't update it very often because it doesn't need updates to be updated mm -hmm. very often. Only when package kit receives a major upgrade. But other than that, it just works. The only yeah. annoying part of it is the notifications. <laughs> it does you enable notifications for updates. It doesn't work. One uh, thing I did want to mention with your toolkit because I played around with it uh, a little bit. And this is a, just a very minor suggestion because, again, I always think about the people that are brand new. On the very first screen, you have a lot of options, you know, when you first launch the application. Seven but it's not real. It wasn't real easy to figure out how to quit. Oh, I see you have type Q to quit. Yeah. No, type Q to quit or on the main menu, the, or as I call it, the Rust menu because the main menu is written yeah. in Rust. Thank you, Oglo. Uh, but uh, yeah, I couldn't figure out a way to quit it because every time we, we did quit, it would just say exiting and the window would say open. So <laughs> I was like, the only way to... Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So... Because it's launching inside a terminal, like your yeah. dot desktop application. Yeah. yeah. It's launching as a t because it's a CLI. So 
I was like, okay, Q will not do anything. Well, it's I'm just... sure you, you could come up with a way to, to create a, a, a little, quick little couple of lines of scripting to find the uh, the process ID of the application as it launches and I'm then later have it kill that. Yeah. that specific process yeah. ID. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. It I'll is... figure it out. I'll figure it yeah. out with time. But there's another bug with the, with the tool. The only reason I mentioned that is because some people are going to need to run your tool in a TTY. They're not yeah, it does. Oh, TTY, you cannot close the window. Right. Which in a TTY and anybody watching, any you can kill any shell process with Control C, so they can still get out yeah, of there. Yeah, that's knew the that, other bug. But, mo but most people are not going to know that if they're new. They're yeah. going to drop to a TTY to try to fix their problem. And no, the reason I didn't mention Control C is because that's another bug. Yeah. When you Control C, it's going to error out. No. Oh. For whatever reason, I, I can't figure. I'm still, I'm still figuring out Bash. I'm still. Maybe... That, that's a minor issue. Like it, you, you'll figure that out. That's not. Yeah. That's not yeah. a, a major talk, issue. I talked to one of my developer friends. He's gonna help me because I tried ChatGPT. Trust me, and it can't figure uh, uh, if it's wearing pants or shorts. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> so. Um, I will figure it out. I'm talking to someone who's going to help me with my error uh, handling. I call mm -hmm. that error handling because control C error handling, because right mm -hmm. now I have it where if you do control C, it will say it either crashes or it will say, would you like to try and run it again? <laughs> no, control C works perfectly in the TTY. It is the terminal emulator would be the issue there because uh, okay. you're running it inside another program in the TTY. You just get back to the shell. Oh, okay. If the TTY works, that's good. But, for the yeah. terminal, yeah, uh, and I was using bin uh, bin bash as a shebang. Now I'm mm -hmm. using uh, user bin, user bin uh, environment. Bin bash. Yeah. yeah. Someone told me it's better for some people using other shells or whatever. Yeah, because some distributions might not have bash in slash bin. It's kind of ancient and deprecated yeah. now. It's, yeah. So, where every distribution should, because it's a standard now, you should have user bin ENV. Yeah. So that's what uh, someone recommended like a few days ago. So a few days ago, I changed that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to mention another part of the toolkit that is very dangerous is when you go into drivers, Yeah. it will offer you uh, the option to select the GPU driver. But this is where I need to show my screen again when I cancel this and relaunch it. Because... <laughs> this took me six months to get right. Six months in the background. So when you go to uh, install drivers, it's in red for a reason. GPU drivers prompt. What do I mean by prompt? When you select it, it's going to... What? Uh, oh. He -he. Because this is... Something? Yeah, I forgot that um, I need to install Inksy. I need to add it as a pre, uh, dependency. <laughs> because when you remember when you told me on the on the podcast uh, on the Patreon cast that I need to show users what GPU they have first before they select yeah. the appropriate driver. Well, that's where this came from. Uh, system. Okay, I launched that. I go back into the drivers. GPU drivers. Okay. So now it's using uh, Inksy to show you what GPU driver you have. So according to this information, this is you have to know how to read Inksy before you decide which driver to install. Then uh, it will ask you the question, if hybrid only Intel NVIDIA setup is supported, AMD, NVIDIA, I don't know how to support it, so I skipped it. So uh, it will ask you, are you only using AMD G DGPU or iGPU? You say yes or no. I'm not using that. I'm saying I'm going to say no. Then it will prompt you, are you using only Intel DGPU or iGPU? No, we're not. And then here comes the big one. Are you using NVIDIA discrete GPU? You say yes. If you say yes, it's going to ask you, which series uh, are you on a desktop or a hybrid? So it's a series of prompts. I want to guide the user. Step by step. So if you say desktop, it's gonna. Ooh. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh... <laughs> no. Uh. No. No. Yes. And then you type desktop. I type D instead of desktop. 
desktop, enter, and then it's going to ask you which series, 900, 1000, or 20 series and above. Because if you select 900, 1000, 900, 1000 is the same thing. It will install the latest stable proprietary drivers from uh, so NVIDIA DTMS. But if you select the 20 series and up, it's going to install the open DTMS. Those are going to be the de facto ones for those series uh, in the future. It was mentioned on Arch. So mm -hmm. let's say I selected the uh, 1000 series. I type 1000, the number 1000. I hit enter, and then it will proceed into doing the whole step. If you select a uh, laptop hybrid, it's going to do the necessary, it's going to prompt you, uh, sorry, it's going to uh, install the Intel and NVIDIA drivers, plus the tools you require to switch between discrete and... So I did the biggest job that's usually the most difficult one on Arch, the GPU drivers. No, I mean, that's... Yeah, and then that's a big job on all distros is is getting the uh... no some so more more and more distros are getting easy because they're already included on the distro. So like I'll give you Bazite, I'll give you uh, Pop OS, I'll give you Ublue, for example. They have Nvidia specific ISOs where everything is done for you out of the box. Yeah. Hybrid, non hybrid, it doesn't matter. It's already done out of the box. But for Arch, it's a more manual endeavor. Well, but Arch I, is a more minimal, do it yourself, read the manual. Yeah. yeah. So I did I did that part. I took that heavy lifting off users' shoulders. I made my yeah. toolkit do that. And people love, and recently people told me, we love your toolkit because of that specific part. It made yeah. the GPU driver installation a breeze. Yeah. Now, doesn't yeah. Manjaro have some NVIDIA-specific packaging that they do where... Uh, the, the yeah, but less and less drive. people, less and less people are trusting Manjaro's. Yeah, what I was saying, you know, is something that maybe could be used you know, as far no. as their code and it. No, it doesn't. I tried it. Uh, their yeah. driver installer uh, only works for Manjaro. It was oh. intended for Manjaro. I'll have to reverse engineer it to mm. to make it work on vanilla Arch. Well, that's yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I recommend people never to use one distro specific tools on another one. Because let's say Cache OS. Cache OS have a, amazing tools, but specific to their distro. They tell you, you can use it on other Arch-based distros, but we don't recommend it. Why? Because it's so embedded and reliant on their core modifications of Cache OS that if you run, it, uh, run them on vanilla Arch, you're going to have to install dependencies, and those dependencies might be out of date because you don't have the Cache OS repositories. And it's this whole yeah. uh, hullabaloo for, for, for nothing. So if people want to use Cache OS tools, I tell them install Cache OS. Mm -hmm. Well, so, it's, it's almost, even though all Arch-based distros are rolling release and you think they would be compatible, it's much more like all the Debian-based distros where depending on what branch they're based off yeah. of, you know, what dependencies, like when you go grab a, a .deb file, yeah. you need to know what distribution that was created for yeah. because it's not, you know, what Ubuntu has in their repos is not the same as what Debian, Debian Stable has in their repos and it's not the same probably as Mint, which tends to lag behind a little bit from Ubuntu. Like you need to know, hey, what is this really for? Exactly. So uh, don't do go mixing uh, mixing things unless the developers tell you, yeah, it's safe, 100% safe. No. Don't go mixing things. Like, for example, I'll give you uh, Eric Dubois' Arch, uh, Arch Toolkit, whatever it's called. Uh, You're talking about the uh, Tweak Tool? Yeah, the Tweak Tool, Arch Tweak Tool. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it was intended for multiple Arch-based distros in mind. So it was it's distro agnostic from the get-go. So th those are safe, yes, but others that are completely tied to the core of the uh, distributions they were built for, like PAMAC, for example. Um, not so much. Not so much. Oh. So uh, I just want to finish the toolkit part by saying the toolkit, it was intended for vanilla Arch. You don't have to use it with my Plasma install script. It's a standalone project. It expects you to be on vanilla Arch because if you use it, in, co uh, uh, in combination with my Plasma install, half the options in there are obsolete because they're already done by the Plasma install script. 
Yeah. But if you use it on vanilla Arch, you can easily and in minutes turn your Arch install or get the things done in five minutes instead of spending hours looking up everything on the Arch wiki. And so all yeah. the necessary stuff is already done for you outside uh, using this toolkit. All you have to do is select the right option, answer correctly, and done deal. Yeah, a, a lot of, you're right, half the stuff in your toolkit is stuff that you you probably probably would do during the installation process one time and you never need to touch that stuff exactly. again. But there are some things I, I mentioned, like your troubleshooting uh, oh. subsection, which, you know, a lot of the Pac-Man related errors that, you know, would people often this run is, into. This is what I learned by maintaining, this is everything I learned uh, while maintaining Zero Linux, the distro. Mm -hmm. I poured all my knowledge, all the knowledge I gained by maintaining the distro into that section alone. Because, yeah. Arch does have issues. Yeah, key ring <laughs> issues and uh, Pac-Man cache issues. Mirror and, issues. You know, Pac-Man, Pac you know, it breaks. I'm not going to say all the time. But no, it, but it does. Yeah. It's known yeah. to, to break from time to time. And I even have, uh, there are two options that we didn't mention that are very important to mention. I need to show that too. In the, in the service section, uh, or the troubleshooting section, there's... Options six and seven, install collection of zero Linux fix scripts and install zero Linux grub GPU hooks. No. Those are two very important options. Why? Because the zero Linux fix scripts include something like rate mirrors. It's a much better tool to update because if you select the update arch mirror list, it will soon be using uh, the uh, rate mirrors tool because it grabs better mirrors than Arch ever will. The, the, mm. it, 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 it tests the mirrors for latency. And if, if the latency is too high, it will not activate that mirror. And it's a very neat tool, tool that I found on the AUR a long time ago. So it includes that. And it, uh, the, the GPU hooks, that's just for the people who are sick and tired of grub breaking every now and again. Uh, it's a thanks to Philip from Manjaro. I gained that knowledge and I copied his script basically, but he taught me what script has. Basically, it adds hooks. So Grub is rebuilt every time there's a GPU right. driver update, there's a kernel update, there's any sort of DKMS update. So it will prompt, it will act, uh, run MK init CPIO and Grub update every time there's those types of uh, updates so you don't get a broken grub. And there are flags that I use that the regular uh, grub update command does not have. It's for safety. Uh, so it includes tweaks by, uh, by Philip, not me. But those make sure that grub will never break again. So this is a lifetime of learning how to deal with Arch. Now, Pac-Man hooks are amazing. I, I love uh, I love the fact that it has that feature. Yeah. I used to uh, use Pac-Man hooks where I would force it to recompile certain Haskell applications anytime. I, I, I had a rule in it, you know, basically a said rule. I go find this string pattern in the list of packages it's installing. If any of them include the string Haskell, recompile Xmonad, recompile yeah. Panda, you know, recompile everything to the latest libraries. Otherwise, they're going to be broken anyway. Yep. So that's how I'd get around that. Yeah, and I want to mention the WayDroid installation guide because that will open just the browser to, mm -hmm. to the guide I wrote while I was talking to one of the maintainers of WayDroid. So basically, uh, this will open a, uh, the link on my website to because it cannot be done automatically. It's impossible because you have to reboot the system midway. So uh, it will guide you on how to install WayDroid. Of course, WayDroid means Wayland. You have to be, use, be able to use Wayland, unlike me. Uh, I e even added in red, again, because that's a dangerous option, Frogging Family TKG NVIDIA All tool is for people who want to install Bleeding Edge NVIDIA proprietary drivers with TKG's patches for gaming. But that's for advanced users only. I don't recommend normal users to use. Uh, to select that's dangerous but other than that it's straightforward and what else Did a ninja will show anything else just the customization i added another option to customization 
Uh, now, people kept telling me we need something related to GNOME. <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> I was targeting Plasma only. So I added uh, set up GNOME extension tool. What, the, what that installs is just <laughs> extension management. That's it. Well, I mean, that's yeah, that's uh, an important thing. I would also say the GNOME tweak. Uh, uh, no, tw tool. tweaks is already in if you select GNOME and Arch install, it already installs GNOME. Oh, well, they got that right because yeah. there are some distributions that actually don't install that with their version of GNOME, and I think that's unfortunate. Yeah, and most uh, other customizations are basically fast fetch, fish, mm -hmm. oh my posh. I discovered oh my posh recently because uh, oh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the power level 10k is on life support so i replaced it with all my posh all my posh not to be confused with all my zsh it's completely different uh, all my posh is just the uh, power level 10k replacement so the prompt so uh, it will enable that uh, zsh will the, my zsh install script is completely confusing sometimes to some people when they see it installed but it's an all in one it will install all my zsh all my posh it's going to install uh, tons of plugins, uh, all the plugins that uh, are available on all of them from the ZSH source, but it will only activate the necessary ones. I include all the plugins because what if users want to activate certain ones? I don't, want to, I don't want to have them go to the Git and pull the ones they want. They're all available, just deact uh, most of them are deactivated, only the necessary ones are activated. So like history, no. like uh, history search, like Git. And yeah. there's one plugin that's enabled called Arch. What that does, it adds Pac-Man aliases. So there's that. And you can install my rice. So that's it. So no, the well, toolkit is you can get up and running on Arch within minutes using my toolkit. That's the whole point. And you you and be, the reason I did it as a CLI is because I want users to see exactly what's going on so they learn, if they want to learn. If they just want to ignore, they're free to ignore, but that's the whole point. One thing about, uh, I, I, I might suggest, uh, you, you may want to look into it at some point, just because I know you like theming. Uh, okay. If you want to theme the shell with a, a, a custom prompt, maybe look into something like Starship, because you can theme it to look a certain way, and then it should work in Bash, ZSH, and Fish. And probably other shells too. Yeah, like it's so, cross. It was uh, cross platform essentially as far as a shell prompt. Yeah, somebody so, told me uh, told me about Starship, but when I installed it, I so got it confused. might save you a little uh, headache, you know, if, you know, on some of the theming if you wanted a, a custom. No, it's shell not about. Prompt. It's it's not really about theming. It's just uh, uh, with uh, all my posh, for example. Uh, I found a theme that I like. Mm. I just used it. I didn't have to do anything there already had a lot of pre-configured themes. On my ZSH, I just used the uh, uh, one that someone created on GitHub. I, I, it's GPLP3, so he allowed me to use it in my uh, thing. So I use that. Uh, you gotta love the uh, GPL. <laughs> yeah, I asked first, can I use it in my, uh, he was like, yeah, use it. I don't care. Most it's people free just... software. I mean, you, you didn't have to ask them. You could just. You know, yeah, that's nice but... of you. It's respectful, I guess, to ask. Yeah, um, I just want to be respectful. I don't want to hit walls because some people yeah. just uh, you, uh, like we talked about. I don't know, a few episodes ago. Like some people just use the GPL uh, GPL license because it's the default one. <laughs> yeah, they don't know really... what it really means. Exactly. Yeah. So I just ask for that. And uh, I was I just started a uh, shared a poll on uh, Mastodon asking people if they want me to include a GNOME rise. There were, most of the people voted no. Keep it simple, which mm -hmm. is smart. Which is very smart because GNOME is not meant to be rice, as everybody knows. <laughs> the developers <laughs> it's hate a, that. It's a different kind of experience. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it's just I like to ask people before I include any extra options because I don't want to bloat the toolkit with useless uh, options. Yeah. But overall, it's a very balanced toolkit. If you look at the bash code, the bash scripts, nothing I goes I, uh, yeah. nothing goes across two hundred lines or a hundred mm -hmm. lines. I don't I don't want it to be slow. But some people did mention that yeah, it, what, my toolkit is kind of slow at redrawing lines. It's because 
I use Gong. Yeah, I, I didn't really notice it on my machine, but I mean, I, my machine is not a, a potato. But yeah. I, I, had you not mentioned that, I would have never thought anything about it. No, because people mention, uh, I, I say that because people mention uh, the fact it, it that also, Neo, Neo Fetch is slower than Fast Fetch. I will also say when it comes to redrawing some of that stuff, the terminal emulator that you use makes a big difference. Yeah, you're so, using uh, Alacrity, right? Or Alacrity. Yeah. Uh, Xterm, I, I know Xterm is ancient, but it's actually one of the worst as far as really fast drawing. Like if mm. you, you have a ton of output, you know, Xterm is slow. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about console here, and console is also slow uh, because it's not hardware accelerated, not yet. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, since you are an Alacrity user, mm -hmm. I'm not an Alacrity user, uh, Alacrity user, but I installed it because I wanted something separate. For whatever reason, it's borderless. It doesn't have a title bar. It doesn't have anything. For whatever yeah, that's, reason. That's typical for most terminal emulators. Yeah. It doesn't have anything. And to, to drag it around, I have, I have to click the, the super key to drag it around, but I don't have mm -hmm. a way to resize it. I don't I don't know how to resize it. Um you now now you do have the option on Alacrity to turn some of that stuff on. Um It's in the settings. It's probably though, yeah. you, you, do you have a custom config file? Yeah, it's it, I just enabled the the transparent transparency. Yeah, the, the, the config file is going to have an option to turn on like that uh the tool. Oh yeah, no. Out. I uh, my uh, my config file was empty. So I just added the transparency line. <laughs> well, then you probably need a config file. Yeah, and then turn I can't the figure, option I figure out where to get it, but yeah. uh, it, it's 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 dri driving me up the wall because uh, when I drag it with the super key, it ends up being a small window, mm -hmm. and then I want to resize it. I don't know how. <laughs> there's nothing. There's no title. There's no maximize. There's no nothing. You you need to resize it. Well, you just do that with the super key too. No, I when I click the super key and click on it, it just drags it. You need to right click on it with the super key to resize. Uh, just like you do in a tiling window manager. Oh, you, that's how we do it in a tiling window manager. You just hit the super key to drag it, um, right click to resize it, left click. Thank you for letting me know yeah. that. I'm not a tiling window manager user, as you can tell. No. But uh, in a floating window manager for your users, I mean, if you were gonna add that, you would need to add a proper title bar so people could actually. Because yeah. the people that don't want the title bar, they're going to turn it off anyway. Yeah, true. Because it's yeah. uh, mostly Alacrity is used in window managers. Uh, yeah. But I just in installed it because I want to use console for my work and uh, Alacrity just to update the system. Because I use a widget, an amazing widget in my Rice. But, but you know what people are going to complain about with Alacrity, don't you? What? You know it's written in Rust. No, I didn't know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Okay, I don't care. <laughs> that's that's part of what I actually initially made it kind of popular is when Rust was really catching on. Alacrity, that was they wrote their terminal emulator in Rust. That's why it's so fast. Now that's the cool kids are writing everything in Rust. I'm the type of person who doesn't mind what anything is written on as long as it works. As long as it's not JavaScript, as long as it's not Electron, right? It's yeah, trust me. When it came shots to shots fired at Electron. Yeah, no, but trust <laughs> me. When I started editing the uh, had, uh, the uh, fast fetch config, which written which is written in JSON C, uh, mm -hmm. that wasn't my. Like... No. Yeah, because uh, it's. Now, the problem with those fetch scripts, they're not slow because of the language they're written in. They're slow because they have to execute so many shell commands. And some of those well, shell commands take time to get the information and then to output it. Like, you know, if, if you have how many updates Pac-Man has, well, it has to run a, a Pac-Man command to check how many. Like, it's just going to take a couple seconds. There's nothing. Well, the language that the script was written in really can't make that any faster. Well, FastFetch is almost instant compared to NeoFetch, which ha which was crossing 65,000 lines of code. No, well, that was insane. Yeah, that's why it was extremely slow <laughs> compared well, to Well, they should fetch. have separated that into... Well, no, he's, he's dealing with farming now. So yeah, we like, right, like... <laughs> it's gone. But uh, <laughs> that's why I use FastFetch in my, in, my, in my rice. But I use something neat that anyone using Plasma should use. It's called App Datafire. App Datafire, AP Datafire. Uh, it's 
a plasmoid that you add to your that will automatically get enabled in your tray once you install it. But it's got mm. so many features. It it, it up, you can tell it to uh, check for flat pack updates, AUR updates, Arch updates, even plasmoid updates. There's not a single package manager that I could find that even discover no longer checks for updates for your plasmoids. Only your themes, but not plasmoids. So uh, this one has a plasmoid updater uh, checker. So well, it, and won't it, check your, it won't check your plasmoids, but I really like the fact that Octopi has the sys tray icon with the Pac-Man ghost. Mm. And depending on the color of the ghost, you can tell whether you've got updates or not. Yeah, <laughs> this is a separate. And by the way, that's a separate thing. It doesn't come with Octopi. No, that's it's called, its own separate package. Yeah, oh, I didn't it's know called that. Octopi uh, uh, update, uh, update Notifier QT oh. for Plasma to minor, remove the QT for GTK. But I wonder, is that part of a dependency? Because no, it, it, like, some it, it, some repo some repositories packages as because I've never installed it as a separate package, but it seems like I always get it. It's because Eric packages up. As okay, a that would explain. Okay, of course, Arco Linux. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, me and Eric, we uh, so me too. I used to package it up as a dependency, but since I started getting confused, like if I add Qt as a dependency and people use zero Linux GNOME edition and they install the GNOME, so the the Qt uh, one is not going to work. Then they need the regular one. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're going to have cute applications on a GNOME system. It's unavoidable. Yeah, but no, it's not about that. It's the Qt tray icon does not work. Oh, you're talking about in the uh, the yeah. bar at the top. Yeah, yeah you're talking about. Yeah, you need it doesn't the GNOME like version, the specific yeah. GNOME. So that's because you know I, some people try to avoid installing GTK apps or Qt apps. It's like, man, you can't get around that. Like, yeah. So basically, that's it. Uh, uh, those are my tools so far. That's where I'm spending yeah. my time. Uh, the yeah, rice... I, I thought they were really well done. And when I went through it, like it was like super quick and easy. The, the install process, your toolkit's very easy to understand. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, just, you know, the, it's already. It it looks like a very professional project. Yeah, I uh, I spent a long time working on that. I had to train myself on remembering a lot of the com uh, uh, code I was writing because I had to reuse them over and over again. Mm -hmm. I started slowly by using ChatGPT a little bit. I'm not going to lie because <laughs> I had to because here's my problem with googling things. When you google mm -hmm. things, you get too many contradicting answers. When I go to ChatGPT, okay, I need to check the, the answers I get, of course. But I do get answers that I can copy paste into a script, run the script, see where the error is, and fix it and play around like that. And that's how I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm playing ping pong between me and ChatGPT. So I write something, I execute it, I notice an error. I send it to ChatGPT and when you, I think it's an option only if you are a paid subscriber. You can upload, attach your script. It will go through the script. It depends on which uh, model you're using. But if you're using the right model, it will read the entire script. If you're using the wrong one, it will read the first 10 lines and do the lazy thing and tell you, I don't understand. So, uh, but it will go through your code and will tell you, oh, here's your, and you tell it where, where the error, what error message you're getting. It will try to fix it. And that's how I ping pong between me and uh, chat gpt but i do write the code uh, and that's how i learn yeah and it's like using Jupyter in uh, code, uh vs code so never tried that it's an inline assistant chat gpt yeah mm -hmm. well, everybody's got a plug in now hey yeah. even emacs has chat gpt plugins which brings now, which, me to okay. my uh, which brings me to my closing uh, my closing surprise i wanted to keep it to the end i have a you, surprise but i need your help with it <laughs> you're switching to doom emacs finally no but oh, okay. close very <laughs> yeah, close <laughs> very close i want to add an option in the toolkit to set up doom emacs okay that's an option that a lot of people have been requesting. Yeah, that would be easy because it's only uh, two lines, a git clone, and then run the script. No, but I want to, custom I want to install a customized 
version. You know me, mm. I'm not gonna use vanilla. <laughs> I'm a KDE <laughs> then, user, so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well not a completely customized version. So I was thinking, and you're free to edit this part out if you want, mm -hmm. but I was thinking maybe use your config, ship your config in my toolkit, and that people yeah. that people can use. And it will, uh, so it's going to say distro to uh, Doom Emacs setup. Yeah, I don't have an up to date Doom Emacs config because I've just configured my own from vanilla GNU Emacs to, you know, it's essentially. Whatever, can we, uh, whatever yeah. I can ship, just. To, but honestly, to... that's easier doing like my config of just standard Emacs because then it doesn't require an installation process. You just install the Emacs package from Arch Repo, and you're done as long as my config is in .config slash Emacs. So basically, it, well, so basically git clone your thing to .config and... Yeah. Well, we'll talk, it, uh, yeah. we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it offline. And, and Emacs users will know how to do the rest from that point. Yeah, I want to ship something that's a little bit ready out of the box instead of having them do everything from scratch. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an easy thing to do. Yeah, so we'll talk about it later, but uh, oh. this is an option coming to, to the toolkit and uh, because a lot of people have been requesting it and I, since I don't touch Emacs, I don't know how to do it. So uh, with that being said, thank you for, for uh, doing this. Uh, it, this was fun. Yeah, this was really fun and yeah. uh, hopefully people will enjoy my, uh, my work, my hard work, mm -hmm. because altogether it took uh, almost a year to, to bring all my knowledge together under those kind of... So the main reason I decided to do this and quit maintaining the distro is I wanted to get away from Palomares. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Because so, that was, you know, when, when I was playing around with Calamares and, you know, building the ISOs with all of that, and it's just, it's so much work. It's not yeah. hard work. But it's, it's so time, cons time, consuming. time consuming. It's just, man, yeah. I, I, I don't have time for it. Like, I, I try to, these days, I'm to the point where I really, in every area of my life, I want to make things as simple as possible. And that was so not and, simple. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't simple for us to bring to life, but it made yeah. other people's lives much simpler. That's the whole yeah. point of this. Plus, more freedom. More freedom. Yeah. Well, More at freedom. the end of the day, you know, I do worry about duplication of effort. And these days, the Arch Linux install is so dang easy. Yeah. I even yeah, I, mean, I to, yeah. even it, me doing the basic Arch install that I used to complain took hours. Now it doesn't take hours. Now it takes me on the slowest internet on the planet, one of the slowest internets on the planet. Uh, it takes me twenty minutes. Right. And I'm not even talking about the Arch install script. I'm just talking about you get to the TTY and the ISO, you run F disk. If you if you know how to partition the drive, partition the drive, hack strap, you know, away you go. Like it's yeah. just so it's like seriously five minutes yeah. if you know the commands and kind of know what you're doing. You know. Or you uh, and 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 here's the thing. In my video, uh, I forgot to mention this. Good thing you mentioned it. You reminded me. But I mentioned during my uh, Plasma install script, I did it in a different way. Not a lot mm -hmm. of people show this method, but I had to say it. You can just boot up the machine, the, the, the Arch ISO on the machine you want to install Arch on. If you have, for people only, only for the people who have secondary machines, you can SSH into that machine and just simple copy paste all the commands. It, yep. gives, you, it, it, it gives you more ease uh, it makes it even more easier. Uh, so uh, if you have a secondary machine, if you don't, yeah. then you don't. But if you do, SSH. Well, well, I'll give people a pro tip. As somebody that's done a lot of command line installations of a lot of different distros, just switch to a second TTY and use the Lynx browser, which is always there, the command line browser, navigate oh. to the wiki, and then go back to TTY, whatever you were on, TTY3. You know, Switch you between the, TTYs. You, you could, yeah, all right. That yeah. way you can still view, even though you only got one monitor, you had to view a command can copy, line browser. Can, can you copy-paste from one TTY to the other? Uh, I don't believe so. Hmm. I don't, we, because we you know, have to typically that, that requires... Um, Wait. It's all done with X11. You don't have a, a, a display yeah. server. You don't have um, a display server, yeah. Right. 
uh, on way I, re I realized that uh, recently on Wayland. If you run a virtual machine that uh, uh, in Wayland, so basically mm -hmm. the desktop, the guest is running Wayland, and you are on X11 or vice versa, you cannot copy paste between the two. Yeah. Now, yeah. there are actually ways, I believe, to actually send a message between TTYs. <laughs> so you can actually type from one TTY yeah. and have it mess. Like, there, there's a lot of, you know, that's, that's extreme power user kind of yeah. stuff normal people are not going to do. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Are... <laughs> where you le left you on your right foot. Yeah, kind yeah. of solution. Yeah, but that's... We don't want to scare the children with stuff like that. Though. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that th my, my toolkit will always grow. Uh, today I released three updates, some of them because, uh, because of typos. <laughs> but uh, I added this new update feature that, uh, that's already up. Uh, and in the next couple of days, Emacs will be coming. Mm -hmm. An option to, cool. e to set up Emacs. And uh, more to come, more to come in the future. My Plasma mm -hmm. install script is ready and done. Unless Plasma changes things on us, well, at which point well, I, have I will to definitely it. link to your uh, your tools in the show description. That way, folks yeah. that want to run through an installation, anybody that was going to install Arch with KDE Plasma, especially, mm. especially. I would suggest your your post install script. Just I mean, streamline that. To it's so dead simple. So. It's so dead simple, and it takes care of all uh, of all the annoying uh, parts like pipe wire, Bluetooth. And right. the best part, I added a little, neat, neat little thing at the end where if you're installing it in a virtual machine, you know how it's you as a reviewer, since I'm mm -hmm. no longer doing YouTube, you as a reviewer. Don't you find it annoying when you install a, a distribution and then you ha once you're on the desktop environment, you have to right-click, display 1920 by 1080? Well, now you yeah. don't have to anymore because no. my Plasma install script installs the, uh, it will detect which virtual machine you use, yeah. virtual box, yeah. VMware, or... I mean, it's, it's really not complicated to, uh, with a simple command, determine what drivers somebody is, you, what, what yeah. kind of machine they're yeah. on, yeah. and then based on that, pick a default resolution. Like, you know, if somebody's on a laptop, pick this resolution. If they're yeah. on... Uh, like, but the, the Arch most... does that already. Arch does that yeah. already. But the problem right. is for VMs, specifically for VMs, it doesn't mm -hmm. do that because right. you don't have the guest tools installed. But Arch doesn't do that. There's a neat little option called Vert Detect. Mm -hmm. you, you, this is specifically made to detect if you are in a virtual environment and which one you are in. So okay. I use I took that and I used it to detect and then it will install the relevant guest utils. That way, once the distro is installed out of the box, you don't have to do anything. It automatically defaults to 1920 by 1080. No. So I did it for reviewers. I added this mm -hmm. uh, this feature for no. reviewers. So you don't have to mess <laughs> with installing the guest editions or whatever specifically for qmu because nobody well, knows a lot what of distribution called. maintainers never bothered with that is because really only in the last i would say 10 years or less have virtual machines gotten to the point where they're good enough that people can actually install things in vms and actually it works like almost like on native hardware yeah. like there are a lot of people that actually use virtual machines like legitimately use them for work yeah, for because Docker containers. Good, where, you know, 15, 20 years ago, that, that was not even a possibility. Virtual machines were kind of a joke. Yeah, mm -hmm. but think about Proxmox and uh, Docker right. containers. A lot of people uh, have home labs running off of Proxmox yep. and Docker containers with Docker, con and then uh, because Proxmox interconnects uh, virtual machines between each other. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the perfect, uh, perfect reason. Anyway. Uh, that was yes, a long sir. one. That was yeah, a good one. Yeah, we, we ran it a little bit, but you know what? We I, I when, when we start talking about Linux and free and open source software, you know, these chats are always enjoyable. So we did run a little long. I know some people. Gonna Let's have, hope the edited version gets got down. Well, you a know bit. what? Well, there's only so much we can edit out. So, but I, I think we're we kept this to a reasonable length. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. All right, and thanks, Steve. And uh, any other plug on, on our way out? Any where can people go? find you yeah of course you, they can uh, find me mostly on mastodon i talk a lot on mastodon i share every single update i push to the toolkit on mastodon 
no longer YouTube. I will keep the channel online because there are some videos that, are, that might be useful to some people. So I'm keeping it up there, but I'm not coming back. Uh, too much of a headache and I... I don't have the tools or the Well, means. I will definitely link to your website and to your Mastodon account because I've yeah, got those. Yeah, that's the so. only... Uh, my Discord server is dead. It's there, but no people come in and go. Nobody stays. So my Discord server, I don't like to plug it because mm -hmm. it's there on the website if they uh, if they want to go there. But my website and Mastodon, that's the... And my forums are dead. Because the and I'm going to go over. ahead and link to your uh, your GitHub as far as these projects, because yeah. I'm assuming you wouldn't mind people that want to help with the code. Uh, I was going to mention that. Okay, yeah. great. Oh. So if, if anybody if anybody is interested in letting me know how I can make the uh, the toolkit and the, po uh, the Plasma install script better, let me know. Especially, I would highly recommend users report issues. Because reporting issues on Mastodon is not the right way. Because I need logs, I need screenshots, I need a lot of that. None of that you can do on uh, Mastodon. So if you want to report issues, please do. Because I can't be, uh, I can't remain the only person uh, detecting bugs. I need other people to test and report the bugs. That's how would I will be able to fix them. I. I found a, a few bugs in the past few days that are that were so stupid, but nobody reported them. They were there for the longest time, but because nobody bothers reporting them, they were there for a long time. So, no. If you want things to be fixed quickly and you have ideas, GitHub is the right place to go. All right. Well, I'll uh, add all that to the show description for those that need the links. And keep the love coming in uh, in Linux, I wrote a post on. I have another blog, but that's a blog, Dark Zero's blog, where I yell and scream and hit the wall and frustrations and everything. This is where they go. Well, so, I'm sure we're going to get into that uh, probably the next time we talk on one of these. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> but it's linked on the website, so All feel right. free to go there. Uh, All right, Steve. Well, appreciate you hanging out with me. All right. Peace All right. out. Peace.